What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Market Marauders. Beating the market one trade at a time. If you're the Market Marauders, investment channel helps you find best deals in the market. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. Like, comment, and share. Also, make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, and that bell notification icon. So, as the title suggests, yes, it is earnings season. Day two of earnings season uh, for the week. Uh, if you're interested in the, some plays going on this week, make sure you check out the community tab uh, on the main page. And I have a picture of all the plays that I'm going to be reviewing for this week. Uh, with further ado, let's jump into it. Tell everybody who's out there making some good money, getting into them trades, and cashing in for them profits. Uh, so we'll jump to the first one. We got ticker sign BYND, had their earnings today. Moving average 10 is 140.18. Moving average 50 is $129.96. Moving average 100 is $127.89. And they ended the day at 142.25. So they are on a bullish breakout since the earnings. Um, and as you can see on the left hand side, looking like Christmas, all green, um, no red at all. So. Definitely on their breakout. Look at this moving average 10 line. Definitely has crossed the moving average 50 and moving average 100 line. Uh, so very bullish uh, after their earnings. So let's jump into their earnings because, as you guys know, I don't like to just read charts. I like to go into some background information. So let's dive into it. All right. So go into some background information on them. Uh, this is their earnings that came out today. So you see right there, August 4th. Uh, net revenue increased uh, to a record 113.3 million, up 69% year over year. Uh, retail channel revenues up 129%. Uh, it's astronomical number for them. Uh, year over year, driven by higher household um, penetration and increased average spending uh, per household. So basically, more people at home, uh, more people came and bought uh, the Beyond Meat uh, products. Also, a lot of deals that they had um, definitely helped this. Uh, situation as well. Uh, net revenues were 113 million, increased 59 percent year over year. Gross profit was 33.7 million. Uh, gross margin of 29.7 percent. Uh, net revenue adjusted gross profit was 39.6 million, or adjusted gross margin of 34.9 percent of net revenues, reflecting exclusion of expenses attributed to the pandemic. So net losses uh, was 10 million, 10.2 million, or 0.16 uh, cents per common share. Adjusted net loss was 1.2 million or 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.02 per diluted common share, reflecting exclusion expenses attributed to the pandemic. Adjusted EBITDA was 11.7 million or 10.3% of net revenues. So there are a lot of things going on, uh, a lot of deals uh, that helped this. As also, uh, the whole pandemic situation, people being at home, uh, definitely helped to push this company uh, to record highs as far as profits are concerned. So if uh, uh, you guys were able to look at the community one, I had them as a call, so it seemed like it was a pretty good option uh, as far as that was concerned. So I hope you guys locked in that one uh, and were able to benefit off of these earnings. So jumping into the second one, uh, we got ticker sign DIS for Disney. Uh, moving average 10 is $117.64. Moving average 50 is $116.21. And moving average 100 is $116.21. Um, the end of the day at $117.29. Uh, so below the moving average 10 line, uh, but definitely above the moving average 100 and the moving average 50. So on a little bit of a bullish run, run up here, uh, but it seems to be, you know, selling off towards the end of the day. Large candlesticks uh, in the red for them uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, if you're not familiar with this platform, this is Webull. If you'd like to join Webull, get two free stocks. I have a link down below. If you'd like to join Robinhood, get two free stocks. I have a link down below for that as well. Uh, before you jump into some background information on Disney. So this is their earnings that came out today. Um, just going to read some of the highlights from the top. Uh, diluted earnings per share EPS from continuing operations uh, for the quarter was a loss of $2.61 compared to income of $0.79 cents, uh, in prior year uh, quarter. Excluding certain items affecting uh, comparability, diluted EPS, uh, for the quarter decreased 97% to 
0.08 cents uh, from $1.34 the prior quarter. EPS continuing operations for the nine months in the June 27, 2020 was a loss of $1.17 compared to income of $5.97 in the prior year. Uh, period. Excluding certain items affecting comparability, EPS for the nine month decreased 53% to $2.22 from $4.74 in the prior year uh, period. Uh, results of the quarter of the nine months ended in June 27, 2020, uh, were adversely impacted by the pandemic. Uh, most significant impact was parks, uh, experiences, uh, and product segment of most of the theme parks and resorts. Um, that were closed for the entire quarter of the cruise sailing ship uh, were suspended. So they basically got uh, blasted twice. Um, they got uh, hit from the parks not being open and also from the ships not being open. The only thing, in my opinion, that saved them was Disney+. Plus. Um, Disney+, Plus definitely, you know, saved them, uh, which I think this is... Um, what this next statement is saying, despite ongoing challenges of the pandemic, uh, we've continued to build our incredible success with Disney Plus as we grow our global direct consumer business, um, said Bob Chapik, CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Global reach of our full portfolio uh, of direct to consumer now exceeds an astonishing 100 million paid subscribers and significant milestones and a reaffirmation of our DTC strategy, uh, which we view as key to our future growth of our company. So, you know, growth for them, uh, squeaking by uh, with the profits. Um, so, you know, barely, barely, barely making it by. Um, you know, they were, they were definitely blasted by um, uh, the whole pandemic situation going on. Uh, definitely expected them to have a lot worse um, earnings than they had. Uh, going to the revenues, uh, net income loss from continued operation uh, before income taxes. Uh, we have revenues, 11779 uh, compared to the uh, 2019, where it was 20000 uh, You got 4840 uh, compared to 2009. Uh, total segment operating income is 1099 uh, compared to 3952 um, So I'm just going to say quarter in year. Um, net income loss from continuing operations, I uh, was 4,718, uh, compared to, uh, 1,430, uh, the previous year, uh, dilute EPS from continued operations is 2.61, uh, dilute EPS from certain items affecting, uh, comparability is 0 0.08, which we went over these, uh, earlier, but that's just it in a chart form. So income loss, let's go, uh. Yeah, so wasn't too bad, um, in my personal opinion, um, but, you know, I think a lot better than a lot of people had uh, been expecting. Um, so, you know, they definitely are benefiting uh, from, you know, their whole MLB and NBA, um, you know, they're kind of the forefront of, you know, getting all the players places to stay, uh, using their resources to their availability. Um, and I think that is also in part what is helping to save them um, as well. Um, so, you know, they have a long road to recovery, uh, but I think they can make it. And the stock definitely is uh, reflecting that uh, it was not as bad as people thought that it was. So going to the next one, we got tickets on ATVI for Activision Blizzard. Uh, moving average 10 is $85.78. Moving average 50 is $83.46. Moving average 100 is $82.21. And they ended the day at $86.45. So they are above their moving average 10, uh, moving average 50, and moving average 100 uh, on a very bullish uptrend. Uh, so we see right here, this is a 30 minute chart. Uh, they've gone up, they just continued to go up. The VWAP 14. Uh, it's definitely showed that volume has increased significantly uh, towards the end of the day. They definitely had a spike in volume. A lot of people probably buying in uh, before the earnings came out, um, which seems to be the case. Uh, but let's go into the earnings and see how they actually performed. 
So this is the Q2 segment. If you're not familiar with Activision and Blizzard, they make a lot of video games. Um, so we'll go into some of the video games they make. So they make Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare, uh, Tony Hawk's World Series 2, Crash Bandicoot, Call of Duty Mobile, World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Diablo. Um, they also have mobile games uh, from King Games, um, which is Candy Crush, and then uh, Crash Bandicoot Run games. So going into... Um, Second quarter 2020 segment results. Uh, it says revenues, net revenue was 993 million uh, from Activision side. Uh, probably, you know, due to the fact Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, you know, came out. Uh, segment operating income is 559 million, 56% operating margin. Uh, revenue grew 270% year over year uh, to quarter two, record driven by Call of Duty. Uh, Modern Warfare and Warzone in-game revenue, strong sales of premium Modern Warfare and addition of Call of Duty Mobile and catalog sales. Operating income and margin reflect the high incremental margins uh, for both uh, in-game and upfront sales of console and PC. So basically they benefited from, you know, everybody uh, being, you know, locked away in quarantine. So, you know, I expected this to be very high number didn't know it's going to be as high as 270 percent year over year but you know still a very high number uh for blizzard uh net revenue was 461 million 203 million for operating income a 44 percent margin uh revenue of 20 percent year over year driven by another strong quarter uh for wow so wow basically you know Help them increase uh, the whole Blizzard side. Uh, operating income and margin both grew significantly year over year. So, yeah, uh, for the King, the mobile side, uh, operating no, net revenue was $553 million. Uh, operating income was $212 million, uh, 38% operating margin. Revenue grew 11% year over year, uh, the highest since the acquisition, uh, which growth in in both in-app purchases and advertising. Operating income was also the highest since acquisition uh, with operating margin increasing for PP uh, year over year. So all three, you know, of the sectors of this company are basically, you know, going really high. Um, I definitely think, you know, the winner of this one um, is the Activision side, uh, but, you know, very good uh, earnings wise. And I think the stock is definitely reflecting that. Um, I think, you know, they will continue to grow uh, because people, you know, who've used uh, these products, I think will continue to use them, continue to play their games. Um, and, you know, I think growth will continue to grow. I think as people go back to work, I definitely see, you know, the mobile app portion going down uh, on the Blizzard side going down uh, as far as growth is concerned. Um, but I definitely see, you know, this staying a pretty high number um, as far as that's concerned, considering, you know, most people working from home remotely uh, has become the new norm for a lot of Americans. So going into uh, the next one, we got ticker sign NKLA for Nikola Motors, uh, everyone's favorite stock to hate, <laughs> in my personal opinion. We got moving average 10 is 38 10, moving average 50 is $32.89, moving average 100 is $32.35, and they ended the day at $38.84, so looks to be rallying on a pretty bullish uptrend uh, towards the end of the day, if we can see, if we can see that, uh, it's just continued to go up. Uh, people probably expecting the earnings to be good. If you look at the left-hand side, people still uh, in the green for earnings. A lot of people buying. Uh, we had like a, a partly of a sell-off right here. Uh, this is a 30-minute chart, so just bear that in mind. Um, and then it kind of went sideways uh, towards the end of the day um, right here. So, you know, after hours, you know, it kind of sold off, uh, denoted by this uh, big red candle right here. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it ended... Um, you know, majority of the hours uh, on a bullish uptrend, but I think it's going to go very bearish, especially after, um, you know, the earnings come out, in my personal opinion. Um, going into the earnings, we have uh, some updates from them. So let me jump into some of this. So they did open their uh, or did their groundbreaking uh, for their Coolidge uh, facility. So, you know, that was interesting to look at, um, basically just breaking the ground on that. Um, going to the second quarter, uh, the part that people care about is the earnings. Uh, loss from operations. So, the loss from operations, if we see quarter over quarter, 
um, definitely, you know, increased quite a bit. So, uh, loss for operations, um, you know, Q2 of 2019 was 17,209, but in this quarter it was 86,642. Uh, net loss, uh, was 86,643. Uh, adjusted EBT, uh, EBITDA was, uh, 46,978. Uh, net loss, uh, per share, uh, basic and diluted was 0.33. Non GAAP net loss per share. And basic diluted is 0.16. Uh, weighted average shares outstanding basic is 303,785,616. So business outlook um, says Nikola intends to begin uh, testing uh, trade BEV units uh, in 2021 with selected customers and partners. Data received from the fleet uh, testing program will be crucial as move towards low volume uh, production of the Nikola Trey BEV. Uh, management is optimistic as we continue to achieve milestones towards our greater goal, becoming the leader of zero emission transportation industry. Now, you know, if you've basically been following this stock, it's, um, you know, I think they have good intentions. I think, you know, they um, definitely... Uh, are in the right track as far as vision is concerned. Uh, but profitability is, you know, a, n a whole nother thing uh, on here. You know, saying statements like you'll begin testing in 2021. I mean, that's so far away uh, considering all things that, you know, their rival competitors like Tesla. Uh, you got these other companies like um, uh, Shell, uh, ticker sign SHLL, uh, going public with uh, Helion. Um, and you have all these other, you know, EV companies popping up, uh, with backing and with products. So, you know, definitely, um, uh, a very competitive niche that they're in. Um, and, you know, I'll be interested to see, you know, how fast they can ramp up production in order to get, uh, a profit basically, you know, um, I don't consider, uh, profits to be pre-orders. I consider profits to be, you know, vehicles that people are using. There are also some statements that, uh, uh, Trevor Milton has basically said that, you know, kind of put me off, uh, of the stock, like saying, you know, all the trucks that they make, they're not going to sell. They're just going to be leased out. And then, you know, they're going to sell the fuel for it. Uh, in my opinion, I don't see why, pe why a person would get a truck to lease it and then have to pay for mileage and pay for the fuel from you. Like, you know, that doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, he said they'll charge like by the mile. Uh, but, you know, if you're making a truck that good, why can't you just sell it? Um, you know, imagine if, um, you know, Nick uh, Tesla, you know, made cars and they were like, oh, we're going to lease them, you know, and you can only charge them at our charging stations. You got to pay per mile to use them, you know. I don't think that many people will be using them. Uh, but that's just my personal analysis on that. Um, make sure you check the community tab to see uh, what I said on that one. Um, going to the next one, we got ticker sign uh, UPWK for Upwork. Uh, moving average 10 is $17.29. Moving average 50 is $15.82. Moving average 100 is $14.90. And they ended the day at $17.51. So they're above all of their metrics. Moving average 10, 50, and 100. Uh, their VWAP was high. Uh, denoting that the volume increased. Looks like a lot of people bought towards the end of the day. Uh, Expecting a good earnings seem to be um, so a lot of people bought um, the moving average 10 is definitely above the moving average um, 50 and the moving average 100 if you look on here after hours they kind of sold off a lot so that price is not the same uh, Denote it by the after 1586 where they ended uh, going to their earnings. Let's jump to their earnings. We could see uh, Second quarter financial results came out today uh, so the top statements, uh, revenue grew 90% year over year to 87.5 million, exceeding guidance. Uh, marketplace revenue grew 19% year over year to 78.5 million. Marketplace um, take rate improvement from 12.9% to 13.7% year over year. So some pretty good metrics. Um, going into uh, these other metrics on here. We see gross margin remained unchanged year over year at 71%. Uh, net loss was 11 million or 0.09 per share compared to the net loss of 2.5 million or 0.02 uh, 
uh, per share in the second quarter. I wonder why their net loss was so much more this year compared to last year. Uh, that's kind of an alarming one for me. Um, net GAAP loss was $3 million, uh, or 0.03 share per share compared to the non-GAAP income. Uh, net income of $1.0 million or $0.01 per share in the second quarter of 2019, adjusted EBITDA. Uh, a non-GAAP financial measure was a loss of $1.2 million compared to the positive adjusted EBITDA of $1.2 million in the second quarter of 2019. So one of the alarming things on here that I see is that their net income loss uh, was $11 million uh, compared to the net loss of 2.5 million in 2019 so you know i wonder why their burn rate was so high and why you know they were losing so much money uh especially considering you know what upwork is you know it's a website where people can go and you know basically put things online uh for different services you know if people are out of work they can uh suggest services from them i just wonder why people weren't using weren't using the website or why the company used lost so much money if you know during the pandemic people were out looking for work so anyway that's my synopsis on that those are the ones that i picked for today's date uh drop a comment down below tell me which ones you guys are looking at tell me if you're able to lock in some profits some of these videos are helping make sure that thumbs up for the algorithm and i'll see you guys next time peace